So today we're here in True Mart in County Galway to speak to the Mart Manager, Marion Devan, to find out how the Mart has been operating since COVID-19 struck and also to find out how the trade has been like. I'm Marion Devan, Manager of Tune Co-op Livestock Mart. I've been in the Mart business here for the last 42 years. The way we're doing it at the moment since COVID-19, in the beginning we rang up sellers and we took in, we'd say different lots. When I say took in, we have the money on our, booked in our books. So then buyers would come on to us and they'd look for a certain type of animal, certain weight, whatever. And we were sending the buyer then, he'd ring first and he'd go out to the seller on the farm. And if they could arrange a deal, they would do so. And on another day then they'd bring them into Tumart. An online platform on the 8th of June, when we actually come back live, when, when, when people can go in the auction ring again. And the auctioneer will be there selling. So we'll allow so many in the ring, buyers only, of course, and then the seller will come in when his lot comes up and he'll be allowed, he'll be there for the sale of them. It'll be, it'll be tough going, but look, if it gets us back on the road, we're delighted. So we take bookings from 10 until 1 on a Tuesday morning, the morning of the sale, and the farmer then takes them into the mart in the afternoon, same afternoon, between 2 and 4. And the buyers then come for 5 o'clock and they are let down maybe two or three at a time to uh, put in their bids. They have a card with the pin numbers, so whatever they're willing to give for, a, for sheep, whatever sheep they like, then we take, when the cards are filled and handed up to the auctioneer, we take it inside and we look for the highest bid and we ring the seller. Now, you know, some sellers are very happy, but again, you know, you'll have the few that prefer to bring them home. It's time consuming, but other than that, it's working okay, it's working okay. We know it's not forever, you see. So it's, it's really to help the farmer and the buyers. Staffing would be a skeleton staff at the moment. Um, but please God, hopefully, everybody will be back when we open up again the 8th of June. All going well. Trade has been pretty good in the last couple of weeks. I think 48 kilo lamb, would be 138 euro that would be the top price which is very good now on hearing today's report i believe um they're down about 10 euro so we won't know that till after the sale this evening we're hoping for the breeding sales that they will be back more to nor normality because if they aren't uh, it will find it hard to work we will find it hard how do you have all the buyers we more than likely might have to put the sheep through the ring at the moment, they're sold in the yard um, on a plank. But, you know, if, if we have to go back to, if we have to put them in the ring, it will be a lot tougher for us and a lot more expensive because we need more staff. Tumart opened in 1961. Some local farmers went around to other farmers and they looked for money to start off the mart. And I think they were looking for uh, a pound a share. And so that's how Tumart got started. It, it just gave a, a fair price for, to the farmer for his stock, cattle or sheep, uh, where it used to be a local fair. They would no right place before that. Um, so next year we'll be 60 years, it'll be our 60th anniversary. And please God, hopefully there'll be celebrations, people around for that. And, you know, uh, I'm 42 years here myself. Would you believe it? I'd say about 12, maybe 14 years ago. Yeah. So it, it's an interesting job. Um, you get to know the people, they know you, um, if you're fair, they're fair with you and that's number one priority in Tumart is fairness and that be buyer or seller and the man selling the one animal to the man selling the 20 should be treated the same and hopefully they say that of Tumart. Despite the disruption that COVID-19 is causing for marts across the country, Tumart, like so many others, continues to facilitate the movement of both cattle and sheep for local farmers in the vicinity. So today we're here just outside Ballinrobe in County Mayo where we're going to take a look at two brand new sheep sheds on the farm of brothers Mark 
and Patrick Moylet. Mark Moylet is my name. I'm a dry stock farmer here. I've predominantly sheep and I keep some bullocks as well. Um, I'm farming here in Creve the Neil. It's an area in South Mayo. I'm farming here since 2015. I took over part of the farm from my father and this is the shed then that I've just built for housing my sheep and lambing at the springtime. We had a, an old shed on the existing farm and it was it had served its purpose, I suppose. It was starting to, you know, fall apart a small bit and it was time to upgrade the facilities and it was really, there was, we looked at spending some money on it and it didn't seem to make sense. So it was better to go with new and modernise and keep up with the, the pace of farming and have, have a modern facility here for handling sheep and you know, caring for them as best we can. It's a four bay shed. There's a double tank to one side of the passage and a single tank on the other side. Um, I have a walkway passage uh, that I'm going to feed the sheep out of. We, we used to feed out the old trough system and it was a lot of labour, whereas it can be all done now from out at the front. So it's less labour intensive. First of all, I spoke to Martin, he'd be a good friend of our family here and he put me in touch with Damien and we got a good price and I priced around with a few contractors but they, they were keen for the job. My name is uh, Martin Kennedy um, I work with Damien Ryan Contracts Limited um, we were the contractors who built the building here behind me for Mark Moylet and the one for Patrick Moylet as well. The sheds were kind of built in tandem with each other. We uh, moved from one shed to another and also we had a third building going on in the area as well. So between all three, we, we kind of worked our pens, our tanks from one shed to another. Um, steel work was ordered for here in the interim while the tanks were being installed in the other, in the other buildings. And it's a, a, a process that flows from one to the other and you have constant work. Patrick Milas from I'm here in the, we're living here in Daniel in uh, County Mayo. The farm system I have there, we run 200 acres of land there and we're, it's a mixed farm, it's cattle and sheep. Uh, I'd have running about 40 suckler cows and I'd have two stock bulls and we keep the whalelands and then we uh, fatten, the, fatten the bullocks and fatten the heifers and kill them then at two, year, two years of age. Over on the sheep side then we lamb down the oats there in springtime. The shed over here was originally built in say 1990 by my father and um, we, we used to have about 300 oats that time but we changed the farm then in 2015 and uh, it was split between Mark and myself and uh, I run here full time farming and Mark is part time. I decided rather than spending money on the shed to change it that I'd be as well off to put up a new shed for what I need it and uh, that I'd be able to get grant funding for it. Literally be about 12 or 11 or 12 years to a bay and uh, it's, it's, there's walkways down here and um, the passages are fairly wide so it'll be ideal we have uh, pit silage here and it's, it, it should work very well on pit silage. It started, say, probably last, this time last year, I went for planning and I got approved. And then I contacted Martin there and he came over and we had a chat about it. And then Damien and the crew came and they had done all the work and up to top spec there. And it's, uh, it came out very well. Although Patrick is adding the final touches to his new shed, it is fair to say that come next winter the two brothers will be properly set up to farm more officially and it will hopefully make life far easier for them in the future. Thanks for watching this week's Farmland. You can keep up to date on the latest agri-news on agriland.ie and the Agriland app.